Being in New York, I finally realized how important community was for me. Because you're alone a lot, and then it's like, okay, you have to create your own little family. And I think for like artists, it's not like, they're not necessarily going to the office every day to this job where you have, maybe that's your community. So I wanted to create its own community that's like, I would like it to be self-sustaining and self-functioning. I have the youngest of four siblings, and I'm by far the most superficial of all of them. Like none of them could give a flying fuck about, you know, one's like works in like the psych ward, like oh one's a, like an academic. I'm more in between because they're so rejecting of, you know, not giving a fuck of society that I'm like, oh, I wanna see what's there, what's, what, what have you dismissed, what have you discarded. But that's my family, that's what I care about. I went to a year of college and I studied for two years in Berlin. I went to school and it was like a mixture of an art and um, intellectual history, kind of like philosophy. I was one of two Americans. All of them had grown up under communism, they're a few years older than me. So they never grown up with any billboards. And like I was so different, like so much more materialistic, so much more brainwashed and knowing about this stuff. Like literally, they didn't have a clue and they were way more educated than I was. We would go into like a philosophy class and it's like, okay, tell me what the good is. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> what is the good? You know, and it's like, they're like rattling off different philosophers, different opinions about this. And I was just like, you know, totally at sea, but it was interesting. And then I got to New York. I'd always done photography, but I was like, you know, doing it more seriously. Um, I started like dating a sculptor. So I moved in with him and he had a studio nearby in Red Hook. So then I started to be introduced to Red Hook basically. This time I would also, I would drive with really into doing road trips um, and so I drive around and photograph stuff. I would photograph naked truckers. <laughs> I think I was driving to New Orleans. I was in some rest stop and I was talking to some guy and I was like, oh, can I take your picture? And we're talking for a while. And it turned out he was an exhibitionist and he told me his like fantasy was to pose for Playgirl. A trucker's bodies are very strange because you're sitting in the truck. So like you have to constantly consume calories and caffeine to keep awake. But since your like legs and arms are more like atrophied but you have a huge belly so it almost looks like you're a pregnant lady. It's like that was kind of I was like looking I was like oh, I want to pose you like an old painting. No they think you're a freak and I probably am a freak because I'm asking unattractive men to get naked. <laughs> Sometimes I would, wouldn't even be naked it would just be intimate to like photograph those kind of men who are like tough and supposed to be this kind of thing like so like tenderly I really liked that to get inside that way. There's one uh, I lost this one in the flood which is annoying this is my favorite one um, I had gotten this guy, he was hauling lemons back from Mexico, so these huge trucks filled with lemons, and he wasn't, he wouldn't get to fully naked, but I have like photograph, he's like lying on top of these lemons, kind of like a calendar, such a good picture. Well, the men found this place, um, it was a Jewish printing press, so my mom has a foundation. She does education and helps build schools, so I wanted to create an art space, like a interdisciplinary, have different studios. It's like two warehouses with a sort of living space in my studio in the, in the middle. So there's like another apartment for someone to live and um, that's like frequently like kind of a writing or film studio. And there's a gallery and then this was a bunch of studios divided to like eight or ten artists. So it was, it was kind of just like a packed house of people doing stuff. The thing I love is just when I'm working on something, I can just go out and ask somebody what they think. I like it, it has a little buzz, it has a little energy. We used to live in communities. You have a baby, you pass it off to your aunt, your uncle, your sister, and then it comes back to you, and then you pass it off again. I feel happier when I exist that way, when I'm around other people. This is a shirt, it's an old t-shirt I bought on eBay that is, um, I think, an old Balenciaga t-shirt. <laughs> um, these are leather shorts I bought, oh, from Reformation a long time ago, a couple years ago, and then sneakers that I wear this summer. I'm uh, wearing a bodysuit that I always wear, one of Donna Karen's old bodysuits. These pants were a friend of mine's, um, my studio pants, and this is another eBay old baseball jacket, eBay find. Tuxedo pants. <laughs> These are from Salaral. <laughs> is that Atchua? And they're um, on the Ecuador-Peru border. We split there two summers in a row. First was just kind of checking out, and then I went back to film a documentary and stayed with us try. You follow all their custom. And they show you how to hunt. and swimming in the same river as like you know alligator and piranha and then like it's like you're hunting for the animals you're swimming there and then you're eating from it it's like well, it's incredible like, th their senses are so much more attuned because we're like you know the white people with our gear they would be like oh go get your umbrella and it's like blue sky like this like 
all day. Ten minutes later, like the most ferocious thunderstorm, and you're just like, how the hell did you even know that? The one good thing, the most amazing thing about the flood is like everybody was helping each other out. So I had like ten people here one Saturday, and we're all like washing what negatives I could and hanging them up. Yeah, and that's all my work. I would have panic attacks constantly. I would wake up in the morning and I would start like, like I couldn't breathe. Like I, like I never had one before in my life, and I guess other people told me that's what it was. It's like you feel like you're gonna die. Creatives and artists, people are naturally like kind of broken, and they can't be just satisfied. I do know that. You know, I'm sitting in a beautiful place and I can say, you know, country and I'm cooking and leading a wholesome existence. I still get, you know, I can't, I get, I just, it's like a compulsion. I remember my friend even asked me that, I think, like, mm -hmm. most like, we were just like sitting by the fire and I'm like carving on a piece of wood and they're like, why do you, why can't you just let the, the friggin' wood be, you know, stop. It's been a few days with super 1%-ish people in, in like London this summer and um, it's not like that everyone wasn't intelligent and cool and nice. The way they live is you have no cares, no concerns, and everything's always done for you. And it's like you live by your by your whims, and it's like that's a place that I feel is like lower when you just live by your desire and whim. There's no like building and work and like that, and so it feels like this very rootless, like floaty existence.